Rub up your engines! Okay, everybody knows Honda Civics are well-made cars, but like everything else, do they make them as good as they used to be? Are they worse? Are they better? Or is it a bit more complex than that? No, of course, these cost a lot more than the early Civic. They bought this for $25,300. I remember when you could buy it for $2,500. <laughs> Showed my age. Now, I do have to say, they're beautiful cars now. Look at the original Civic that actually listed for $2,150. It was an ugly car. <laughs> this is not an ugly car. That's strange, man. Enough. Guess where they're built? Jolly old England. There it is, UK. Don't go saying, oh my God, it's an English Honda. The English make junk. I'd never buy one of those. Look, they're just putting them together there. The engines and everything, they're still coming from Japan. They're just putting them together. And understand one thing. Most Formula One race cars, they're engineered and designed in England too. Decent technology for building things. They just don't have the money and the infrastructure to do the whole thing. The parts come from Japan, but they're put together in England. And as you can see, this is not like a Tesla. This is a uniform gap. We follow it around and the other side. It's also a uniform gap. Honda cares about quality. This isn't Tesla trying to scam everybody and making junk. They make solid, reliable cars. And of course, under the hood, there's modern technology. It's a four cylinder engine, and unlike the old ones, it's got a timing chain, not a belt. That, in and of itself, is a better idea. You don't have to mess with the rubber timing belts. I saw a 2020 Honda Odyssey the other day. It still had a rubber timing belt on it. Who knows with that, but this has a timing chain. Better design than the older ones. But now here comes the quandary. Honda makes more internal combustion engines than any other company in the world every year. But this is a 1.5 liter. Honda seems to have fixed their oil dilution problem with their software and the new GF6 oil. But still, you're not gonna get the same lifespan. We won't know for years to see how long these last. But from my experience with Hondas, they had turbocharged engines for ages. I've seen them still going pretty strong with 200,000 miles on them. You get power and gas mileage. They are still light cars, so 37.4 miles per gallon is something that's as zippy as this thing. Not a bad deal. And just like Toyota, Honda makes all their own automatic transmissions, and they do a pretty good job. Because I had a customer in Houston that had a 2010 Civic automatic, and he burned the transmission out. The older ones, a little bit weak. The new ones, no. So in this case, the transmission, as complex as it may be, is probably a lot better built than the older ones were. And of course, they're all modern inside. You know, they're beautiful looking cars. And unlike the early Civics, they actually have leg room. And being a hatch, of course, they're handy. You got room, decent, drop the seats, you got a whole bunch of room. And I'd say that from the front seat to the back here, that's about as much room as the entire N600 Honda that I bought in 1970 that I'm gonna try to get running again. So they're a lot bigger than they used to be inside. And of course outside, they're still an easy car to park and drive. Let's take it for a spin. Now it's a Honda, so of course, starts right up. The AC works perfectly fine. And you can see he hasn't even taken the plastic cover off the screen yet. <laughs> No shaking. It does have electronic stuff like the old ones did, an electric parking brake, electric brake hold. Now that's electronic crap I really don't care about, but that's the way they are these days. So you gotta live with that. I'd rather have the mechanical emergency brake. It's gonna last forever and never break. You can see it's got a real wide backup camera. You get a really good view and it's very crisp. Now you're in a Civic, so you're relatively low to the ground, but not too low. They are fun to drive in the twisties. They're lower down and this is a sport, so it's got a little better suspension system on it for right. There's no problem taking Taking curves, it just follows you through. Doesn't oversteer, doesn't understeer. And even though I got the air conditioning on, it's still a pretty quiet car. It's not the little rust bucket early Civics that rusted out, clanged at every turn, rode like a washing machine. No, it's a completely different vehicle to that. That's the technology in here alone you can understand. Fun for taking a drive out in the woods. And now we're gonna see what it does in a straight line. So we'll slow down here, and we'll let that guy get way ahead of us, as long as there's nobody behind us. We'll wait a little while longer. Starts out slow, but once that VTEC kicks in, Smooth, seamless shifting, decent amount of zip. We're going 70 in no time at all. And it's got very responsive steering. This is an old country road that goes all over the place. Hey, it's got no problem. You want to do a little zigzagging, 
These are fun to play around with. Yet for such a small car, it still rides pretty good. A lot better than the older ones. So is the handling. Now, of course, it has all those modern things like lane departure that tells you when you get out of your lane. We'll see if we can get it to work. Well, that didn't work too good. I really departed the lane and the warning didn't come out. So, so much for their lane departure system. That's why I don't trust these things. Don't think these lane departure, blah, 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 is going to save you. They won't. You got to use your eyes. You got to look in the mirror. We'll try it again here, okay? Look, I went outside the lane and it didn't put anything on. Let's follow it a little and then pull over slightly just to see if we go real slow. Okay, there. It says we departed the lane, but I had to do it extremely slowly to make that light come out. So don't bet your life on these systems. Unless you're a really slow driver, you still gotta watch what you're doing. These are zippy cars, they handle responsibly. Learn how to drive it. Don't depend on some kind of crazy safety system that may or may not work. Now granted, this is a brand new Honda Civic with some new designs on it, but going by the history of Honda, I'd say it'd be a very reliable vehicle. But as will it go three, four, 400,000 pretty trouble three mileage like an old Honda Civic did only time's gonna tell that one but the overall drivability comfort ride is infinitely superior to the older Civics and of course it's not an ugly duckling like the early ones it's a beautiful looking car especially the sport version that's put together in England and sure speed burners are gonna say I want a Civic type R to race around in they cost a lot they're really fast but they ride like iron buckets if I had a choice and I was driving from Tennessee to California and back I take the Civic Sport long before a Civic Type R because it rides nice and smooth and it's plenty fast enough for driving on interstates I would not want a Civic Type R to drive thousands of miles in I think my back would give out they're still solid made there's no arguing that you're getting an awful lot of technology but Honda makes good engines and transmissions 25 grand what kind of fun are you gonna have in a modern car 25 grand the average car is 36 to 40 thousand dollars these days and this is certainly more than your average everyday Civic I even asked the owner if he wanted to trade it even for my old Celica and he kind of laughed but he's thinking well maybe I could auction that off as Scotty's car but I'm afraid he'll probably have to wait until I'm dead because that's how it always goes when somebody's dead then everything goes for a bunch of money that's why artists fake their deaths <laughs> and everybody if there's an old sick artist they'll start buying their art up that was a lot of fun and now you know the truth about a modern Civic versus an old-fashioned Civic so you can make a wise choice yourself. And here's some bonus questions and answers. A self-driving semi-truck just completed a 950 mile delivery in the United States, 10 hours faster than a human trucker could. It's the way that I think makes the most sense. The system is set up for highway driving. So 80% of the drive was done on the highway by the truck itself, but there was a driver. And the 20% getting in city delivering stuff was done by the driver itself. Now to me, that makes total sense. It's just like when you're in a jet airplane. Most of the time, the airplane's flying itself, right? But the pilot there take off landings in case the problem comes to me that makes a lot of sense if they want to do that fine actually having the trucks drive without a driver that's another story you really don't want that you want to have a driver in there now these guys went from Arizona to Dallas 14 hours and six minutes where it would have taken about 24 hours for a regular driver to do it the driver was there the whole time but he only drove it about 20 percent of the time when there are built up areas on either end of the trip that to me makes sense now of course it'll be a long time before any of this stuff becomes normal because there's rules of how often the driver has to take rests and stuff they'd have to reset all the laws and all that stuff but at least as far as I'm concerned this is a step in the right direction don't think these trucks are going to drive themselves everywhere you need a human there so the guy still got his job it can be more efficient with the machine driving itself probably a lot safer when they deliver get into the city and then load it back up and go back and deliver another thing he can handle that stuff while well, the truck's doing the brunt of the 80 percent driving now that finally makes sense to me not this fantasy of the trucks are driving themselves all over the place like it's some kind of robot movie so if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos remember to ring that bell